Would you step through a fairy portal? Imagine being stood between worlds, one foot in our world and the other in theirs. The land before you is bathed in bright colours, is ethereal looking and feels so welcoming. I wonder what you would do. I saw a fairy portal once and almost went through it. I was 15 years old and it was the week before school was due to start. I was depressed about classes starting because kids had started to bully me. My mum had taken me on a day trip to the local preserve and when we arrived there, there was a busload of elementary school kids and my heart just sank. I was noticeably chubby at the time and kids were always cruel about it. This was the 1980s and fat phobia was intense then. So we were walking along the main path and it was full of kids. My mum could instantly charm children so they loved her but when she wasn't looking the kids would make gestures and say mean stuff to me. So as my mum chatted to these kids I wandered off the main trail and found an old trail. It was very distinct in spite of a lot of undergrowth and it passed between two trees that arced towards one another, almost like a doorway. And then I came to this huge hedge. It was too high for me to see over it, and it stretched all the way from the old trail back to the main path. It seemed to cut across the forest. This old trail led right up to it, and there was a gap just wide enough for a child to fit through. I peeked inside and it was so lusciously green and cool and it was a stifling hot day. Nebraska heat, humid and oppressive, so it was unusual to find someplace that cool in the forest given all the heat and humidity. I squeezed into the gap and set my foot in the earth on the other side. It was soft and moist and springy, unlike the hard, baked, sandy earth of the main forest. And what I saw remains the most beautiful place I have ever seen. The sky was pearl blue. There was a vivid green bank sloping down to a dry creek overgrown with ferns. A huge fallen tree trunk spanned this ancient creek like a bridge and on the other side was a forest of silvery trees. The most inviting thing I have ever seen. Peaceful and wondrous. All the sounds from outside were hushed. There was no gabbling children, that sort of thing. It filled me with joy. And at that time of my life, I had precious little that made me happy. Now, I had my hand braced on the outer wall of the hedge and had my other foot firmly planted in the hard, sandy, real part of the path because somehow I knew if I put both feet in the fairy side I could never go back. It was so hard not to walk into it and just start exploring. I truly felt the place call to me and I've never wanted anything so bad than to cross that tree bridge and explore that silvery forest. Even the air felt different. It was moist and sweet. I felt a light, gentle mist touch my face as I closed my eyes and breathed in deep. But then I thought of my mother. Could I really just leave her behind? She had a sad life too and I thought it would be a real gift to show her this place and 
we could go in together. Well, as I had that thought, the gap in the hedge began to close, pressing against my stomach and back. I felt I was forced to choose and fast, go forward or go back. I pulled myself back out of it with a real effort. The hedge branches caught in my t-shirt and tore a hole, and a branch scraped my arm, even drawing blood. I went back down the old trail, past the two trees entwined like a doorway, and I found my mother on the main path still talking to those brats, the ones that had the nerve to bully me when she wasn't looking. I insisted that she come with me right away to see this most glorious thing. And she didn't doubt me. She was willing to follow me and see. Only now it was really difficult to find the old trail in the undergrowth. It was all overgrown and covered in leaves. But I managed to spot it and I made it as far as the two trees that were like a door. Only they were strung with these nasty cobwebs, like the trees were suddenly so old and ugly that I couldn't even imagine going near them, and the trail had disappeared entirely. I looked up and pointed in the direction of the hedge, sure that she could spot it from there. It was nine feet high and stretched for several yards in both directions, but no, there was nothing, only the usual trees and undergrowth. My gosh, my shock when it wasn't there. I saw then that it was impossible that it had ever been there, It would have dissected the main path, you see, which was packed with children and teachers. I was speechless, trying to get my mother to understand what I saw. But she didn't doubt me, you know. She said, maybe it was just for you to see. I felt such a profound feeling of loss like really inconsolable loss. Probably, at the end of my days, I will still think of that place. That was my chance to enter the fairy realm, but I turned back. I've never shared this story. I always thought if I had children that I would tell them about it, but that won't ever happen now, so I'm sharing it with you. This happened to me as a kid, and I still think about it a lot. At the time, I was about 13, I think, and I was doing a kayak trip down a river in a very rural part of France with my school. This was one of those autonomous trips where we carry all our stuff, like our tents, and we slept in the wild or with a campsite, And we went down a significant portion of the river as a group with other kids and just a couple of adults. It was a three-week trip and the region we were in was very wild with deep canyon-like gorges and lots of old, deep nature, if you know what I mean, everywhere. What I saw happened about one week into the trip. So we were pretty far into the wild. We stopped for the night on a riverbank and I pulled my kayak onto the so-called beach and I wandered just a little bit further up to check out where we might sleep. Well, just to explain the location a bit, we stopped on a rocky riverbank that was slightly inclined towards a thick line of large trees with a clearing behind them. So I was just walking up, approaching these trees, when I suddenly felt strange, extremely strange, kind of woozy, and I felt compelled to look up towards these trees. I saw the clearing in between two trees with a very long, 
open plain stretching out behind it and a deep blue sky and the base of hills on the sides. This immediately seemed strange to me as there aren't that many plains where we were, almost none to be honest, and the view, what I was looking at, seemed very surreal, like it wasn't the same time and space we were supposed to be in. It felt like a fantasy landscape, even though it wasn't very far from some landscapes that I've actually seen, but it was misplaced, if that makes sense. In the background, I heard a sort of musical piping, but it felt very ethereal and weird, and I could hear it very distinctly, yet it felt like it was coming from far away, like an echo. The closest I've ever heard to that sound since then was when I heard a high-pitched harmonica, but it wasn't exactly the same. What I heard that day sounded a lot more crystalline and pure. I stood staring through that opening for what felt like hours, but in reality must have been just a few seconds because someone called me and I snapped out of it and looked away. When I turned back, the opening wasn't there anymore. It was just a regular clearing. No more planes, nothing. I honestly don't know what happened. I don't think it could have been heat stroke or something like that as I felt absolutely fine afterwards and we hadn't even been that active that day. What's really weird is that I feel a sense of longing every time I think about those planes like I was supposed to have gone in. These experiences are starkly different, aren't they? But they have one glaring thing in common. These people were teenagers when they discovered a fairy portal. There could be some meaning in this. The teenage years are a time of great transition in our life's journey. Just as stepping through a fairy portal is a transition from this world to the other. I'd love to read your thoughts on this in the comments. Have you ever seen one? Would you step through one? As for me, no. No chance. I am not messing with the fairies. Although, when tempted by an ethereal, welcoming and peaceful land, who can say what any of us would do in the moment? If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and give me a sweet thumbs up. I will see you next Friday. Until then, I hope you will stay curious and be kind. Cheerio!